Um, a few castings got announced in the past, like one to two days. So I want to read off all, everyone so far that is uh, casted. Okay. All right. So first off, we have David Corin Sweat as Clark Kent slash Superman, Rachel Brosnan as Lois Lane, Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, Sarah <clears throat> Sampaio as Eve. Tech uh text my mocker. I always get her name wrong. Skyler Gisando as Jimmy Olsen. Eddie Gaethje as Michael Holt slash Mr. Terrific. Maria Gabriella De Faria as the engineer. Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner, who was a Green Lantern. Isabella Merced as Hawkgirl. And Anthony Kerrigan as Metamorpho. So that is the cast that we have so far for the Fantastic Four. Now, in the past two days, the announcements of, of, of the people that have been casted is Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, Skylar Gesondo as Jimmy Olsen, and Sarah Sampaio as Eve. So those were the last current um, announcements that we've gotten. All of those other castings have already been announced. How do you feel about Superman Legacy right now, and how do you feel about these castings? Superman Legacy sounds like an OG, you know, through and through Superman movie that we're going to get. And I cannot wait. The castings are all on point. Uh, I think every one of these actors are awesome, you know, well-deserving of the roles. Uh, you know, and, and what's interesting about them is for the most part, you know, other than... I want to say Lois Lane, Rachel Brosnan, you know, like a lot of people wanted David Corn Sweat and we're calling David Corn Sweat. A lot of people were calling, uh, you know, Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. And uh, I know you just said his name, but I'm blanking on the kid's name for Jimmy Olsen. What was that? Uh, his name is Skylar Gisando. Skyler Gasando, because I want to give him his respect to, um, you know, all these characters, people, you know, were fan casting with these actors for the longest time. And, you know, I, I, I got to give a lot of respect to James Gunn because James Gunn, you know, he's sifting through all of the nonsense on social media, you know, that are hating on him. He's sifting through it. He's going through it. And he's also seeing what fans want. And he is going to the ne negotiation table to make that happen. Because it is not easy to, you know, negotiate these contracts with, you know, these caliber of actors, especially guys that are, you know, you know, on the up and up and are up and coming and not everyone really knows so well yet. He is making that happen, and there's a lot of work to get done to make that happen, and he's done it with multiple actors for this movie. So I think it's a major win, It's a and it's a really good sign for what's to come with the DCU. You know, if, if franchises, if the heads of franchises listen to the fans as much as James Gunn has been, you know, fandom as a whole would be in a much better place. I agree because Corn Sweat is a fan casting. Like people were talking about Corn Sweat before James Gunn yeah. even uh, talked about him. And with Nicholas Holt getting the Lex Luthor casting, it kind of reminds me of Tom Hiddleston for Loki. Because if you, I mean, let's go right, let's go to back in the day, right? Tom Hiddleston didn't audition for Loki; he auditioned for Thor. Same with Nicholas Holt, right? He auditioned for Superman, and now James Gunn put Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. Um, I think Nicholas Holt has the potential to be the best Lex Luthor that we've ever seen. In the whole entire DCU, um, in, in, in all of DC comics that we've seen, you know, and or all DC live action. Um, I Nicholas Holt is an amazing actor. I loved him as Beast. I mean, he was amazing as Beast, yeah, in, uh, in that X Men reboot, which really showed you his range of, of acting. Now, being Lex Luthor is a new role for him, right? He hasn't really played a role like this, but I think that you know, he has the look, and I think he's going to be able to you know, draw up that kind of, you know, persona that Lex Luthor is. And I think we're going to see something very special. Not to mention Nick Nicholas Holt, David Cornsman, all these people, they're very young, you know. Yeah. And James Gunn has the division. Like, that's why he didn't go with Henry Cavill. And that's why Momo is not going to be Aquaman. And uh, when you're finding a new Batman is the idea of, you know, I want to have younger people. Um, Well, except for, for Batman, because, you know, Damian Wayne, he's going to be a little bit older. But with, you know, Superman... Uh, this is the Iron Man one for him, right? This is the Iron Man one, and I believe that James Gunn 
is doing the Iron Man 1 formula, but 10 times better. Because when Feige did Iron Man 1, right, what happened, right? I mean, the, the only thing we got was, you know, Nick Fury that hinted to, you know, the the beyond of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What well, James Gunn is doing... I Nick Fury was even in Iron Man 1. Yeah, uh-huh, he was in the end of... Uh, okay, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. But... But what James Gunn is doing, he's taking that formula and he's times times it by 10, right? He's expanding the universe with Superman legacy because, look, we are getting Mr. Terrific. We are getting Guy Gardner, which expands our whole entire DC universe. That's all of space. We are getting Hawkgirl, which points us to the Shiera and all of that stuff that, that, you know, goes on goes on over there. So having these different characters, it's going to make it seem like, you know, it isn't just one hero in the city. It's not just one hero on the earth and i think that that is one of the biggest things that a lot of people have to deal with with shared universes is that it's hard to do like one movie with one hero because you know what i mean like there's a bunch of heroes everywhere so i'm excited to see how he's going to incorporate hawk girl and all of these other characters too because i'm really interested in how that story is going to work you know how how are we going to get hawk girl is he going to be flying to other planets like like you know i mean the ideas are vast, you know, with, with that. How does he meet Guy Garner? Does he end up, you know, going with not saying that Clark Kent's gonna go to Oa, but but like does Clark Yo. Kent end up going with Guy Garner on a side mission on another freaking planet to fight? You know, like, I don't think is it gonna it, is it gonna be that type of stuff? I don't think it's going to be that heavy. I think that the other characters are gonna have small screen times and it's mostly going to rely on you know, a Superman solo story, but these yeah, characters so just, they're seeing like small interactions. Yeah. And, and, you know, we also know that uh, I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that for the Green Lantern series that we're getting, it's based on uh, an older Hal Jordan and a younger John Stewart and a mentorship relationship, which by the way, you know, and, and I know I'm selfish here and like, I love Superman. Don't get me wrong, but Green Lantern is one of my all-time favorite characters, uh, specifically Hal Jordan. You know, I was really hoping we were going to get a Green Lantern uh, movie to kick off the DCU. So, you know, I, listen, I'm happy Guy Gardner's in the movie. A- at least we're getting that. Um, you know, I think Hal Jordan and John Stewart is going to be awesome, you know. But back to, you know, Nicholas Holt and, and his emotional range, like, you know, it's funny because I was just watching X Men First Class, and in those scenes with Beast and Mystique, when they're just meeting each other, and you know, he conveys so much emotion without speaking. You could tell he was he wasn't sure of himself, and, and you know, it, it it held so much weight in those scenes. Um, and, and this was like you know, ten year over ten years ago, I think that. X Men First Class came out in like 2011, so I'm sure he's you know much more experienced now. Uh, he doesn't look much older. Uh, props to him, but uh, yeah, you know I, I think he's going to be an awesome Lex Luthor. And you know, let's really talk about it because I, I saw a lot of people on Twitter, you know, saying, "Oh, well, you know, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor did all of." this, you know, crazy stuff. And they kind of listed all the, you know, big bad moments he had in Batman versus Superman. Listen, I like Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, but he was anything but a authentic and like really, and by the way, there's a difference between being like authentic to the comics, like, and, and, and we'll get into this with Silver Surfer, but like a lot of times people will, say oh well you know this did happen in the comics that one time like when people say authentic to the comics i think they're mostly saying and what i'm saying is traditionally and traditionally lex luther in the comics is a menacing villain you know he's like a badass uh you know master manipulator you know it we just didn't get that in batman versus superman And, and i think that that's something we're going to get in superman legacy and i also I don't think, you know, like, I don't think Lex Luthor is going to die in this movie. I think that we're going to see, you know, this Lex Luthor in a lot of movies and projects similar to the way, you know, Loki was a villain that carried us through a long time in the MCU. 
Yeah, we're definitely getting the Legion of Doom. I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, I mean, that's just kind of written all over. But, um, and Nicholas Hall's gonna play a big part in that. But yeah, man, I mean, I think that this is a great, I think he's a great casting, and I'm more excited to see what they're gonna build, you know, further, you know, with like the universe and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited and highly anticipating this movie, and I can't wait to see it. Um, I'll be rushing to the theaters, and, and just saying this, the DCU is going to own Comic Con next year. I'm gonna tell you now. So yeah. don't be shocked if we get a full Superman Legacy trailer. We get announced who the Batman is going to be. I wouldn't be shocked if James Gunn announces the whole entire Justice League cast. That would be and crazy. I'm, I, I, I'm not putting it past uh, James Gunn. Why is it called Superman Legacy? Did you answer that comic? Clips? Yeah, I, I think this is like a movie that's dedicated to Superman's legacy. I don't think I don't I, like I think the movie is, you know, supposed to honor the legacy Superman has had for such a long time and push that legacy forward within the DCU. I don't think the legacy name has anything specifically to do with the plot. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that quote of when um, it was Agent Coulson in uh, Bedger's One, right? And Steve Rogers, they were flying on the on on this, like, ship about to get all the hella... Uh, Kella, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and basically, um, Agent Coulson said to Steve, he said, You know, I it changes to your suit, and this, and then Steve Rogers said, Why is the is the is the red, white, and blue too old fashioned? And Agent Coulson said, Well, with the things that are about to come to light, a yeah. little old fashioned is what we need. That's the role I think Superman legacy is going to play. I think that is James Gunn's approach to this movie is I think a little old fashioned is what we need. And I think James Gunn is going to show sad. us how Clark Kent fits in the modern world, how Clark Kent Superman, how I think James Gunn is trying to answer this question or he answered this question when he's writing the, the script. How does an old fashioned Superman fit in 2000 and 23, 24, 25, 26, 27? Yeah. And so that's kind of the direction I think James Gunn is going. It's going to be very classic. Yeah. And I think that's what fans need. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, um, it's funny. I'm actually planning on watching Captain America: Winter Soldier tonight. What a great freaking movie! I literally just watched yeah. it 